Okay, everyone, we have, look at her. Is she stunning? Miss Peppy, ask questions at the end. She does have to go over to the expo. I want you to know that afterwards she doesn't have time to sign books here, but she will go over to the expo in the Savvy booth. Go see her there because she's incredible in every way. I love her so much, and I'm going to turn the time over to Melissa Peppy.
he had a forced way and a forced path. And it was such an inspirational, it was such an inspirational trip. If I could redo that over again in a heartbeat, I would redo that exact trip with Gary giving us those, those messages and those stories. And my favorite was when we went to Gross and we went to the Fragonard Perfumery. And we saw how through hundreds of years, how Fragonard has evolved, which is one of the original perfume houses, one of the original fragrance houses. And as we're going through their distillery and we're seeing their large amber jugs and the corks that they had on top, all we had to do was take the cork off and we could smell. And we saw how jasmine was extracted. And it looks like a large, if you picture a wall and all you see is, um, picture of like a bookshelf, but instead of the books being lined up this way, they'd be stacked. And those were like large, almost shadow box frames. And you pull one out and they're about this thick and it's lined with lard. And then there's the petals of the jasmine that are pinned. And it has to sit in those shelves for six months. And then the lard accumulates the aroma of the jasmine and then it's extracted out of the lard. And that's how you would extract jasmine wow. way back <laughs> way back in the original time. So being able to see this process, see how it's done, have Gary tell the stories, the whole time there, all I was thinking was, perfume is what's missing from what I do in Young Living. It's the essence of a beauty of a woman to wear a perfume. And when we wear a perfume, it becomes our signature scent. It's why I will rarely um, gift like a bride. I will not gift a bride a perfume. That should be a scent that she chooses on that day. So rather I'll present the collection of perfumes that I've made and let her choose one and then that's her gift. And that's a really beautiful way to do that. Because um, it's just such a personal fragrance that you would carry on yourself. And I just kept thinking, we, that's what we're missing. And so the whole bus ride to the next town, and Gary was so tired, but the way my mind works, the wheels are spinning, all you see is smoke coming out of my ears. And I would sit there and I would think, and I was only two seats behind Gary, and he was over here, and he, he was exhausted. And so he'd start to doze off, and I'm like, Gary, I have a question. <laughs> Before you fall asleep, can you tell me something about Jasmine? And then he'd answer, and then I'd think for a minute, Gary, I have another question. Uh, but what, and Gary's mind works the same, work the same way. I always spinning, right? I always turning out ideas. And we love talking about these things. The whole time I was thinking, I need to find a way to craft blends that would smell like Chanel perfume. That would smell like that high end. And not smell oil, which we get told a lot, right? Oh, you smell like oils. And I thought, what if I could find a way to create blends, put them together, and have them smell like a beautiful high-end designer perfume. And so, I, all the way from 2004 until I launched the book in, what was it, 2018, I spent years thinking about this. How would I put the collection together? What would the collection look like? You know, what would I call the blends? How would I get aromas that would smell like that mossy oak that you would see in perfume notes? Because we don't have an oil called mossy oak, or, um, amber or musk or some of those some of those that are just those chemical fragrances and so as i would just go through the collection of oils that we have and smell different singles and smell different blends i would think that smells a little bit like that tonka bean or that would smell like this combination would smell like that violet and i started putting those together and i started studying some of the perfume houses the major perfume houses and the aromas that they would tend to lead towards, like Tom Ford leads a lot towards vetiver, he leads a lot of vetiver. Uh, Chanel will use a lot of jasmine and geranium and apple blossom. And so I would think to myself, go into the memory bank, which is just funny because I, I, I to this day could not tell you what my husband's cell phone number is, <laughs> but I can tell you that at one time at a convention in 2013, someone mentioned, and I happened to overhear, that this particular oil smelled like apple blossoms. And so I reach into that database, right? So what I put together in the collection is really mirrored after some of those top end designer perfume houses. Because I wanted women to finally feel confident swapping out, and ladies, you don't have to raise your hand or admit, 
but it is one of the last things on our journey of removing the harsh toxic chemicals from our life. The perfume is one of those last things that we tend to not want to let go of. And it might be because the bottle was really beautiful, or it might be because it was a gift from somebody, or it might have some sentimental value, or maybe it was an aroma that reminded you of a special day, or maybe your wedding day, or it was uh, something that your grandmother had. Um, I still have a bottle of fruit that I have in my crafting cabinet because that was the cologne I had before. And so when you hold on to that, it's that scent recognition, and it's the aromatherapy, and it's how it makes you feel. So I encourage you then to look at some of those and really pay attention to what are the aromas that you start to pick up. Maybe look at the house, the fragrance house that crafts those and pay attention to what are some of the common scents that reappear over and over and over again. A perfume house isn't gonna tell you their exact compounds or their, um, their notes, but they'll give you an idea of what their top notes are, their heart notes are, their middle notes are, and then you can start creating. A lot of people will send me messages and they'll say, how would I create Calvin Klein Obsession? I'm like, I don't know, because I don't have every single perfume and cologne ever made, and I'm not going to go to the store just to smell them because I value my health too much. <laughs> but I encourage you to go in and research what are some of the aromas these perfume houses would typically use, and then start to play around with it, and you'll discover that. Or, if that's not your cup of tea, grab my perfume book, grab my cologne book, and have a crafting party and craft all of them. Number one, your home is gonna smell beyond anything you could ever comprehend when you craft all of those. I can tell, look, Hannah crafted my sis and I crafted some, uh, some perfume gifts before we came here, and I walked in the office and I'm like, oh, this crafting day. <laughs> it just smells so, so good. Now, the perfumes and the colognes that I've crafted have a lot of top shelf oils that are used. And I call them top shelf oils because they are from more of our exclusive singles. And they are all singles that are used. And that's just to pay respect to Gary and the details and diligence that he put into his blends. I would never want to change or alter those. So they're all singles that are used. And some of them are top shelf oils. A lot of them you're gonna have just from your own collection over the years. Now how many of you take advantage of the monthly promo every single month? Okay, and when I say take advantage of, I mean, this is like the McDonald's Happy Meal, collect all four tiers, <laughs> right? Don't hold back. This is one of the best ways to build your essential oil collection. When I do an Instagram reel or a video or a Facebook Live, and if I do it from the warehouse, people will always comment, doesn't matter what message I'm giving, they will always comment on the cabinets behind me because I have three cabinets that are full of oils. One is all the singles, one is all the blends, one is all the supplements. And people will comment and say, oh, how much money did you spend on that? Do you know that most of them were the free gifts we purchased? Or they were oils that I redeemed with my essential rewards points? Or they were oils that were gifted to me over the years? And when I first started in Young Living, I would think, oh, I'm not gonna go for that tier because I have no need for that oil. What a mistake that was. It is literally one of the best ways for you to build your essential oil collection. And then you will have these oils at your disposal. So then the only things you'd be adding to them are maybe the neroli or the jasmine or the rose, which I really encourage you to get those on your essential rewards order because you can earn points on that. So let's shop smarter and not harder, right? Okay, now the second thing, when you're looking at the perfumes and you're thinking, I can't invest in that, I really encourage you to host a crafting party. When you have a perfume evening, that is one of the most beautiful evenings, and I am telling you, there are so many women in your organization that are perfume closet users. They have that perfume. They know that they need to eliminate it. They know that they need to swap it out, but they're afraid to tell you that they're still using it. They don't know how to tell you that they're looking for something different, something better. Uh, and they don't even know what that is. So hosting a crafting party, a perfume party, a perfume night, whatever you wanna call it, call it something beautiful. But these are classes that are going to be new, they're going to be fun, they're gonna be different, unlike something they've yet attended. And I say, make the evening beautiful. Play some French cafe music, have some spritzers that you make with nature red and some sparkling water, play with some vitality drops, make a bougie on the phone. Brew your sleek iced tea. Yeah. Then add the lemon lavender vitality drops to it. 
That's your bougie Ar Arnold Palmer, right? Serve it in champagne flutes. Like, have fun and make it a really beautiful evening. And it's always fun when you pull out, what is the base in my perfumes? Vodka. <laughs> so it's always fun when you pull that out and everyone thinks, well, this is going to be a party. And then you really blow their mind when you're using this to add to the base of the perfume so that you're not bringing in the synthetic alcohol. By making your own perfumes and showing people how to make their own perfumes and showing them just how beautiful it can be, you're bringing in that sense of femininity, that essence of a woman of who we are, and you're building a really beautiful connection with your organization. Now, when it comes to crafting at a cologne party, you might not be able to rally, in my area, in the army community, I don't think I'd be able to rally in a lot of guys. Tammy, be the same way. Go Midwest. Uh, <laughs> so it's a lot of women that would come and then craft for their guys, right? I suggest choosing maybe three, four, five that you would want to craft, and that that is usually tops. Going anything above that is, is maybe a little bit too much. And don't hold back from what you're going to charge. Now, two things with that. I only charge for my classes to cover my cost. I want my team to know that crafting your own perfumes and colognes really is an economical way to bring this into your life. And if I start charging too much for it, that doesn't show them that. Also, I get paid from Young Living. That's where my commission is generated. So not from my team, but from my OGB. Okay, so I always keep that in mind when I'm hosting a class. My money is made from OGB, not from my team. So I don't want to charge to have the class, but I want to make sure that all my expenses are covered, okay? My second tip is look for low cost, no cost. There are a lot of bottles that you can repurpose. If you just look hard enough with what's already in your home, there's a lot of things that you can repurpose. And think outside the bottle. When you're crafting these things, the perfume blends, you can use that as a room spray. You can use that and add to a base to make your own bath and shower gel. You could use that in a bath soak. There's so many other ways that you can use that blend. I've even used them in the diffuser. Just leave out the vodka. <laughs> you don't need to diffuse that. But the oils used make beautiful diffuser recipes too. When you are looking at what to charge for your event and you start breaking down the cost of what each perfume is going to be, you might be a little shocked. Don't be. If it costs you $21 to make a perfume, do not think that that's too much. Like if that's the cost of the oils getting used, here's the thing. When's the last time any of you bought a perfume? So you are so out of touch <laughs> with what they actually cost. They're 60 to $100. That's on Macy's. At Target, if you go by the curb, <laughs> like those are $50. So why would you ever think that $21 to craft your own perfume using jasmine, rose, neroli, sandalwood would ever be too much? It's not. It's not. And your guests won't think it's a lot because they haven't yet swapped these things out. So they are still used to paying those department store prices for a highly toxic perfume that they would be bringing into their life, okay? So my, that's my tip to you. Now with growing your organization and growing your business, when you are purchasing those top shelf oils or if you're having a member that is going to be hosting a class and purchasing those, there's a lot of really beautiful OGB, right? She's going to be charging for the event, so her cost for it will be covered. And if she's using that on her ER, she's earning free gifts. She's earning the points on her order. Or if she was getting them as free gifts, then those oils were complimentary. And she is still using the cost of what they are on the website to cover the cost of her class. So I wanted to get that huge paradigm out of the way that we think that being able to craft the highest end using our top shelf oils is too expensive because it's not and that's a lie and you need to stop telling yourself that. Now, when you buy that bottle of rose, who has yet to get a bottle of rose or neroli? But yeah, it's okay. <laughs> okay. It's a treat when that arrives. That's a moment, have a moment, savor that moment. You've really just treated yourself and you'll never forget when you buy your first bottle of rose. Am I right? You never forget. How many of you have ever bought a bottle of Neroli? Yeah, you never forget.
can have them either. Yeah. My first splurge oil was geranium. And I'll never forget that moment of opening the geranium, right? I was walking down the driveway and I opened it up. I'm like, I just need a minute because I've just really treated myself. And remember, when I started building my business, I had $7.40 in my bank account. So geranium was a splurge. I remember thinking, this is going to be amazing. This is my favorite plant. This is the plant of my childhood. And I smelled them like, that smells nothing. <laughs> I'm the plant of my childhood. <laughs> you never forget those moments. This still, to this day, is my favorite oil, the aroma of my favorite oil. Now, when you're crafting your, uh, when you're crafting your events, I just want to give, um, give a moment to copyright and just encouraging you to respect an author's work. When I produce a book, and I shared this yesterday when I spoke, it's about an $80,000 investment on our end. By the time we have pictures, graphic design, publishing, and then buying enough in quantity to be able to pass on a nice price point to all of you, and the things that we have to organize, the time involved, the, the employees that go into it, it's not a small investment. And when you take a picture, let's say, of just the oils used in the perfume, and you post that, you're not only dishonoring the author as an artist, but you are violating copyright laws, but you are also dishonoring your guests that are at the event. Every single perfume blend has an aromatic note and an aromatic wreath and a story to it. And so I crafted those stories to really set the tone for how you should feel when wearing that perfume, how that aroma should make you feel, whether that be empowered, beautiful, seductive, uh, connect with yourself, connect with spirit, connect with source, whatever. Every single perfume has a story to it. It has a beautiful aromatic wreath to it as well, just like your top perfume houses were to do. So that's bringing in that element of it. In the perfume book, every aromatic story sets the tone for that particular perfume and tells the story of that perfume. In the Cologne book, I really thought long and hard about how, how do I produce a book that's going to be appealing to the male audience? Because the way that I did the perfume book, that isn't going to be the same. So how do I write these aromatic notes? And then I thought to myself, it's not going to be the men crafting this, it's going to be the women crafting this. So how do I appeal to that? So when you read the Cologne book from start to finish, it's actually a really sexy scene from a suspense movie. It's really cool. Who has done that? Sherry has, yeah. And so every single one brings in one of the perfumes into the story. So it's a really fun way to make your event entertaining. So if we have a cologne party, I really suggest playing some James Bond theme music in the background. <laughs> Just making it really fun. And the whole story in the cologne book is based around the elusive diamond, right? It's this these spies that are on the hunt for this elusive diamond and they have to capture it back. So have fun with how you set up your table decor too. You can make a whole evening out of it, put a theme around it. These are the things that your guests are going to want to come back to for your next event because your first event is creating the excitement for the experience of the next one. It's creating the momentum for the next one and so they all build. And so if you're just going to craft three colognes at a time or three perfumes at a time, they're going to be excited to come back to the next one. And maybe some, this is something that you do quarterly every three months you craft three new perfumes, okay? So it's something that they have to look forward to. Now, I wanna ask you something. Pretend you're picking up a bottle of perfume or a bottle of cologne, you're gonna spray it. Where would you spray it to? You spray it in the air and then walk into it? Okay. How many went right here? Wrist, okay. Yeah, how many said like right here? This is the most popular area. What body is this right here? Thyroid. Do you listen to Dr. Burster talk this morning? How many women are having imbalances in this area in their life? Think about conventional perfumes. Conventional perfumes. And the ingredients in them, the known carcinogens or estrogenic, uh, disrupt the central nervous system, headaches, nausea, look where you're spraying it. We know that what you put on the body goes into the body. You can't even argue that anymore. If you put peppermint on the bottom of your feet, you're gonna smell, you're gonna taste it mm -hmm. in your mouth in five to ten minutes. There's nicotine patches. There's arthritic patches. There's uh, there's all kinds of patches. So we know that what you put into the on the body goes into the body. It is absorbed. And even if you're going to spray the perfume on your clothes, 
you're still inher inhaling that. I encourage you all to look up uh, fragrance or perfume. To look up fragrance as a secondhand smell. It's called the new secondhand smell. And that carries on your clothing and it stays on your clothing. So it doesn't just affect you, it affects any child you hold or it affects anybody you hug. How many of you have hugged somebody that's wearing a perfume and then you have to walk away smelling and you smell for a long time? Long time. Now, I used to be the girl that was excited to go to the mall to go to Bath and Body Works to go shove my nose in every candle. <laughs> I now have a hard time walking down the mall hallway that those stores are located down, right? Or like Target, thank gosh, Target now has a natural section, but it's like three feet wide and it's located next to all the conventional cleaners. I got to hold my nose when I go run through there to like grab what I want to grab. It's like the relay dash in school. Like I know exactly what it is I need to grab on that shelf and I just sprint down <laughs> it to grab what I need to grab. Get in, get out, make time, right? Get on with your life. So fragrance as a new secondhand smoke is what it's being classified as just because of the dangers to the central nervous system through inhalation. Fragrance is one term that houses over 3,500 different chemicals. Chemicals that are protected by the TSCA, Toxic TCSA, Toxic Control Substance Act. So many of them haven't been tested for their safety on the environment, let alone on the human body. A lot of them are known carcinogens, formaldehyde releasers, central nervous system disruptors. They're estrogenic. Think for a moment. Now I'm 40, born in 78, so I think I'm going to be 44 this year. I think that's what it'll be. Okay. So in some, like at some point in your life, you just stop keeping track. It's 40, it's 29. Thank you. <laughs> Never was good at math. So when I was in high school, it was usually pretty typical that a woman would start menstruation, usually junior year, senior year, that 16, 17 year old mark. I'm shocked at what the age is today. It was only 25 years ago I graduated. That doesn't seem like that long ago. It really doesn't. And look at what the age is. And look at how our products have changed. And fragrance is used in everything. It's used in our garbage bags. Our garbage bags are scented. Oh, yeah. Feminine hygienical products. Do you know that it takes three pounds of chemicals to make one pound of cotton? And look at the things that we're scenting our feminine hygienical products with, which are made out of cotton. So we really need to start paying attention to what these chemicals do that are in housed under the term fragrance. And so I want to empower you that when you reach for a product, no matter what that sales rep has told you, no matter what that company has told you, no matter what that distributor from another company has told you, oh, we're the cleanest, or this is great, or this is fine. I don't care what the picture on the front of the bottle looks like. I encourage you, I'm for you, to pick it up, turn it around, and look for yourself and demand to see the ingredients. And if you see fragrance on it, set it back down. You know, the other one I want you to look for is something called isopropyl alcohol. This is going to be a really common synthetic alcohol that would be used even in people that are doing DIY um, perfumes or room spritzes. Don't use isopropyl alcohol. This is the same as rubbing alcohol. It's the same thing, rubbing alcohol, isopropyl alcohol. Do you remember uh, a couple years ago when people were making their own hand sanitizers and they were using isopropyl alcohol in the base and people were doing a video where they were cleaning it in a spoon and lighting it on fire and you can see the flame. Isopropyl alcohol has a very low flash point, which means it burn and it'll burn clear. So it doesn't take a lot of temperature for it to burn and it will burn clear. So you can't actually see the flame. So what they were doing is you wouldn't see the flame, but they put a piece of paper over it and the piece of paper would start on fire. I see a lot of DIY recipes uh, for like fabric sheets um, softener sheets you can on the dye dryer that you take essential oils and isopropyl alcohol and soak the sheet and put that in your dryer. On planet Earth, our dryers freeze heat. So some of these recipes I think, that is dumb. That is really, really dumb. Did you even try that? Now, the other thing that you need to be aware of with isopropyl alcohol is that you can uh, reach toxic toxicity level just through inhalation. And it becomes very dangerous for children and pets because they really can't communicate if they're noticing that aroma or if that aroma is starting to bother them. So isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol, is not something you should even have in your home. Please don't use that. Please don't use that as your face. If you uh, have a dry home and you don't want to use vodka in the formulations, you can use witch hazel. It will have an aroma to it, so just know that it'll change the aroma of your final product. Um, 
and it's a little bit drying to the skin. So when you spray it on, you might notice that it is a little bit more drying. If you're going to host a party and you just want to honor people that might not want to use vodka, then you can just have the blends made up and you can explain to them. You can add the vodka, which is not to you. You can just use water or you can add witch hazel to it. But then bring in that education that you don't use a synthetic alcohol or isopropyl alcohol, and here's why. And then you can impart that wisdom onto them. The third thing that you are eliminating from the repertoire when you are crafting your own perfumes is phenoxyethanol. P-H-E-N-O-X-Y, ethanol, phenoxyethanol, one word. Phenoxyethanol is, uh, it disrupts the central nervous system, uh, mimics estrogen in the body, is also a known formaldehyde reducer. It doesn't have any restrictions on use yet in the U.S., and so companies that can claim themselves as green uh, can still get away with using phenoxyethanol. We haven't really, as a society, jumped into this ingredient enough to research it and understand the importance of needing to eliminate it. But in Japan, the APAC market, Europe and Australia, they have already put restrictions on this. They found that infants were having high levels of phenoxyethanol in their system. They really couldn't understand what was happening or why, because they weren't using products that had it. It was from mom holding baby, because it can happen through skin transference. It also was not safe on the aquatic life or the coral reef system, so I always like looking at what is Australia banning, what is the APAC market restricting, what is Europe restricting. They're always on the forefront, and usually it is to protect the aquatic system first. God save the fish, just worry about us later. <laughs> but I understand it's an important part of our ecosystem. <laughs> but let's look at its effects on us as well, right? I was so proud a couple of years ago, Minnesota was the first state to put themselves as a standalone and ban the use of triclosan. Now, decade ago, the European and APAC markets had already banned the use of triclosan. So we're usually about 10 to 15 years behind on what they have done there, and then we bring it here. Now, Minnesota didn't ban the sales of any products with it, but any manufacturing sites in Minnesota cannot use that in their production because of its danger on our runoffs to our lakes, rivers, and streams. We are not our lakes, rivers, and streams. Yes, again, save those fish. <laughs> so important. Figure ourselves out later. <laughs> when you're having your perfume party, when you're having your cologne party, be sure that you're talking about these ingredients. Those three in particular, for a couple reasons. Number one, you're showing people the importance of making your own products. And once you start sharing that education, your members, your guests are going to want to know what can they make next, right? They are going to want to know what other chemicals can I eliminate that are causing harm to my well-being. And you'll be able to provide that education. So you're creating that excitement and momentum for your next event. The other thing is that you're empowering them to be able to look at the products that they're using. And if you would do that at a more deeper level, you would be able to create loyalty within your organization because people would know that we truly do have the cleanest products in the world and that we set new standards. With every new product that Young Living releases, we set a new industry standard, we really do. And we should all be very proud of that. But if you don't educate your teams on how to read those labels and understand, then that, that, that power, what our company does, is lost, okay? So educate your people. I like to say, if you teach a man to fish, versus give a man a fish, okay. Uh, the other thing with your make and takes is make them unique to you and make them fun. These are events that your members will love to be able to come to because they wanna be a part of that experience with you. The biggest question that I get is what kind of vodka do you use? <laughs> My favorite brand is Effin. Yes. F and vodka. Not only is it fun to ask for when you walk into the liquor store, <laughs> but it is a really great quality. And if you research the distillation method of that company, it gives you a nice segue to talk about our distillation process and the meticulous care that we take in our distillation process. So the two are just very nice together to be able to talk about. You get a really pristine final product when you use something that top shelf. If you're going to be crafting something for outdoor, maybe an outdoor spray or a back porch spray or something like that, you may use the bottom shelf. I don't really care at that point because it's not going to matter. But if you're using something that you want to protect the aroma of and just have the aroma of your essential oils, then the more top shelf, the better. And that distillation process definitely matters. What kind of questions do you have? E 
E-F-F-E-N. Effen means, it's a Dutch vodka, it means smooth. Not through absorption. No, not through skin absorption. You drink too much, yes. <laughs> but not through skin absorption. No, that's a really good question. I just ordered your rollerball set. I mean, what do you um, use as a carrier for that? Still the vodka in there? So if I use a, if I use a roller for a perfume, I do like to just put vodka in it. And in the front of the perfume book, it'll give directions on how to craft for a roller, uh, um, a glass toilet, or a traditional perfume, and then the ratios to use. Uh, and so if I do a roller, I do just use pure vodka in it. I don't like to use a carrier oil because as women, we're putting this on our neck or our wrist, and then it can get onto our blouse, and then it'll leave that, um, that fatty oil stain if you're using like a V6 base. Um, if I'm using something for more of a wellness focus, like a roller for my spine or the bottom of my feet, then I'll put a carrier oil in it, but you know, then it has a different purpose, a different function. Okay, you're welcome. source like a hundred or more, um, you know, reach out to LSPC if they have any discounts available. Otherwise, there's wholesale sites like Specialty Bottle, SKS, but you've got to purchase like a hundred to two hundred bottles. So it's, 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 that's a perfume commitment. <laughs> <laughs> and again, just build that into the price of your event. And the same with the perfume book. Like, build that book into the price of your event. When you, it, it's an extra 10 15 20 dollars for the ticket. I'm telling you, your guests are not going to mind. When you give them that actual book, what are they going to do when they go home? They're going to read the aromatic note and the story on the other oils, and they're going to get excited to craft some of those on their own. And then your plan has worked. <laughs> so build that into the price of the ticket so that you're empowering them. And then maybe at the next event, because they already have the book, you have two ticket price options. And one ticket price would be just to craft the perfumes, and then another ticket price would be to craft the perfumes and get the book. Then they can bring their book with them. Yeah? I love this idea of the crafting party. Um, so I'm curious, when you're crafting more than one of your recipes, do you include, do they get to take their choice of? I usually build it in that they would take all three. Oh, they take all three? Yes. Yeah, so the, the price would be that they would get all three. Now, as my collection of oils obviously is, is, is beautiful and very large, and when you get there or if you already are there, one thing that you could do when you have your classes is have just a pricing menu, and they could select which one they want to make. And because you would have all the oils to do it anyway. Or maybe it's, you know, first come, first serve. And so, you know, oh, that one's all sold out. You can't craft that one, but they could choose among any of the others. So if you didn't want to just limit it to three, then you could open it up to the whole menu board. So there's a couple different ways that you could do that, Sherry. I was curious on um, scent. So do you need to let it steep? And then after it's made, does does the aroma go away? No. And when I find when I mix it in that vodka base, I can... Like, I put a perfume on this morning at 8 o'clock, and I can still smell it. Okay. Usually is where if you put your oils on, just your oils, you have to reapply, reapply. Yes. So I find that the perfume does stay on much longer. And when you're choosing your vodka, that also matters. Um, and don't use, a, don't use a potato vodka. It gets really starchy, and it turns really, it just turns really odd. Um, but it, it, do, it doesn't change the aromatic. It doesn't get weaker. Um, and I don't have to let it steep. Someone had a question. They can gift it. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually never had anybody not want to craft one of the ones that has been done. I've actually never ran into that. Has any has any any questions? Yeah. 
but you, you had three to choose from and then they cropped one, that's another great way to do it. Yeah, that they would just craft one. Or if they wanted to craft more of them, they could just purchase additional to, to craft. Yeah, and again, and I'm not charging extra for that. I only charge to cover the cost of my supplies and then have the book covered. Uh, covered. But I'm, I'm doing this for members of my organization. And so this is a way for me to grow my team. And it's a way for me to show my members how to use their oils in different ways and how versatile our oils are. I've been in Young Living for 22 years. I still have some of those first original bottles, you guys. How many of you have had some of your bottles for 10 plus years? So would you say one bottle of oil is a 30 day consumable? <laughs> so when you can teach your members how to craft their own hand soaps, how to make their own room sprays, how to set up systems and protocols using their oils, how to make perfumes, how to make uh, shower gels, you are literally taking your oils and turning them into 30 day consumables. I love when Dr. Ollie talked yesterday about the key to longevity comes down to three core pillars, wellness, fitness, beauty. What about you bringing in with this beauty aspect? I mean, come on now. And when you feel that beautiful, you're making, you, you naturally make better choices. You naturally want to make better choices. And that's, that's what this does. And once you educate your team on this element, of just that beauty category, you will see them make better choices in their laundry room in their bathroom, in their makeup bag, in all of the products that you're using. You are literally helping somebody transform their life. That's a gift, that is a gift. What you are able to do for people, to show people, that's a gift. It's really, look at you, when the next time you plan your class, just do yourself a favor, take a moment, and really realize what you are actually doing. What you teach at your class, if you do it right, now, if you just set up a station and have the stuff there and have a copy of the recipe and you just wrote down the oils to use, you didn't include the aromatic note, you didn't include the story, you didn't include any of the education on what they're eliminating. You just had a make a take buffet. And you gave no wisdom and you gave no inspiration for them to want to make any changes in their life. So what did that do? That did nothing. And you have such a beautiful opportunity to be able to change somebody's life. I promise you, the things that they learn crafting these perfumes with you, these colognes with you, the wisdom you're going to impart on them, they will never, ever be able to unlearn what you are going to teach them. How many of you are ever going to look at cotton the same way again because of what I just told you? You will never unhear that. So the next time you plan your class and you send out your invites, but you just take a moment and smile and be proud and like, recognize what you are actually doing. You're creating a movement. You tell me about it's amazing. Wait, it's amazing to that I just wake up and do every single day. It's not the best company in the world, and so do you. Any other questions? Like, when a bottle of oil hits the wall or hits the window, like, 
You wake up who I, you will wake up your spouse real quick. <laughs> Trying to be quiet is like an elephant in a tea shop. Right? <laughs> so when you're using those top shelf oils, this is such a good question. How do you have the faith and trust in brand new people to hold that bottle, especially if you're doing a, a tall, slim roll-on, over the time? Sherry's like already going. Those are inside thoughts. Yeah. Inside thoughts. You don't want those to get out. <laughs> you can get all the things in that moment. I buy droppers. You can buy pipettes and use the droppers. I bet I still am so frugal that you have the oil that gets on the outside of the pipette that you're like wiping it all over. <laughs> so I help them. In the beginning, I would help them. So they'd get to handle like the lemon, the orange, the lavender, but for the other ones. Like, let me pull that out and help you with that. And pulling them out of all the pockets, right? The sandalwood, the neroli, all the things. Um, you can hand on my assistant, like, first time she's crafting. Everyone has to go through, like, the, the mental craft test in my head. Like, I have to watch them craft it a few. I'm like, okay, they passed the test. Yeah. They have shaky hands? No. <laughs> and it's hard to control that rose once it warms up because then it does, like, pour out. So once you reach diamond, which should be your, your goal, okay, right? Um, then you're just like, have fun with that way. Ah. And if you get some extra on you, you just rub that all over, supercharge your frequency, it's so beautiful. And then you go hug them, so you get some of it back on you. <laughs> <laughs> like, to be greedy with it. <laughs> but in the beginning, be, you just, you, 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 you can be controlling and protective over it, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, and there's no shame in that. You've invested into these oils. You worked hard to earn them, and they're a part of your top shelf collection. And you can let people know, like, these, these are a part of my top shelf collection oils. I would really like to help you with adding that to what we <laughs> adding that out. Yeah, and then you can take that moment to explain to them, like, especially with sandalwood, because that's gonna gel back up too. Um, Valerian will gel back up, Rose will gel back up, so you can explain to them why you have it then in, tucked, tucked in, your, in your side or in your pocket, and that's a good educational moment as well. It's a really good question, thank you. Any other last questions? When you first started, or as lessons learned, getting people to your class is the first, any tips? Yeah, so inviting success really comes down to how you're inviting. So don't just rely on Facebook. And think about if you were going to invite somebody to a bridal shower, to your birthday party, or to a really beautiful dinner that you're having, would you just invite them on Facebook? No, you would send a handwritten invitation. You would call them, you would follow up. And so those are my tips for inviting success. Mindset is everything too. The mind drives the body, as Mary said. And this is something that the girls have followed me for a long time now, and I say it all the time, the mind drives the body. Because the mind, your thoughts drive your emotions, your emotions drive your actions, and your actions deliver the results. I understand that when you're planning your class, you might be thinking, God, I hope people come to this. What if nobody shows up? Those are the wrong thoughts to have and the wrong energy to put into those invitations because energy is felt. Um, I have a, a workshop going on right now. <laughs> so when you watch the replay and I talk about that, like your, your, your thoughts have an energy to them, right? And so your actions have an energy to them. And so you don't want to put that energy into the invite. So really just change your thoughts in that moment. And if you're sitting there putting out the invites and you're thinking, God, I hope people come to this, what if no one shows up? Walk away from what you're doing. Go take a moment and really just think about the class that you wanna have. Think about the message that you wanna send. Why do you wanna have this class? I don't wanna have the class just to get enrollments. I want to have this class because I wanna educate people on the power of the ingredients that they bring into their home. I wanna educate people on the power that they have in taking back control of their health, their wellness, their vitality. I want to empower women that there's a way to feel beautiful without compromising your standards. And so then I go back to the invitation when I'm in the right emotion with it and in the right frequency with it. And that, for me, has made a huge difference. And look at each event as a way of creating momentum for the next event. So talk about your next one. And your event, the end of your event, should be like a cliffhanger Friday. It should make them wanting to be excited to come back for the next one. And on that note, I can't wait to share with all of you what's coming next. Go down and catch the last five minutes of my workshop. <laughs>